there is the CO2 uh, scare. Personally, I think is usually overblown. Uh, I think that there is, there are, I mean, I don't want to open yet another can of worm, but I just tell you as I, as I think it is without getting further into the debate, I, I completely agree that I'm in the minority here in the scientific world, but I think that uh, CO2 emitted by the fossil, carbon fossil uh, fuel increasing may have a causal relationship with uh, the temperature changes. I think that that's not really proven, but entirely possible. I think that it's highly dubious to think that this effect is, uh, uh, is um, uh, basically dominant over other effects for the, same, for the simple reason that uh, uh, temperature was way higher in the past where we didn't have so much CO2. And CO2 was way higher in the past where there were no industries to produce it. So the, it's, it's way more complex. And to think that the simple thing like how much CO2 we are, we are producing is the only dominant dynamics to, to actually uh, create the greenhouse effect. I mean, it's, it's a little bit complex, but let's assume that. Let's assume I'm on board. I'm a little bit skeptical about this simplification, but let's say I'm on board. To think that uh, this kind of change will create super linear changes in our temperature in the world, uh, it needs a very, very subtle theory that is completely unproven. So you need, so basically a greenhouse effect is sublinear. The more CO2 you produce, the less effects you have on temperature. And in order to make it super linear, you need CO2 making water in the ocean evaporate faster and water is the prevalent actual uh, greenhouse gas. So you need this kind of chain reaction with, I mean, okay, let's, let's, let's assume you have that. But then you have the fourth assumption, which is this change will be fast and catastrophic. And I think this is completely unscientific. Uh, every change of this, this kind will be likely over decades or centuries and there is way more part of this planet that are too cold to be inhabited and cultivated than parts that are too hot and even if you account for the increase on ocean levels that are basically wiping out part of the land uh, paradoxically a warmer heart uh, a warmer planet would be better for human beings uh, uh, over the long term if you have time to adapt and if you have time to switch production and housing and stuff like that and last, lastly, even if I assume that everything like this is true and we are going to have a, a climate uh, uh, greenhouse effect catastro catastrophe, maybe not because of sea of temperature, but because of disasters caused by temperature because hurricanes and stuff. I mean, this is highly dubious, but anyway, even if that's the case, to think that political laws like carbon uh, emission laws can actually fix that with central planning. I think that's an economic fallacy. Uh, if there is a problem, uh, the only way to fix the problem is to cooperate freely in the marketplace, producing innovation, producing stuff, sensi producing sensitivity in people. So like uh, it's good culturally to have the discussion, but the idea that you have uh, the carbon credit as a solution, I think that's economically retarded. So for all these reasons, the content of this green mix uh, uh, rhetoric, I think is mostly nonsense. Let's say it again. Uh, the guys want to play with, uh, with that as long as they're not going to push changes to the protocol to, to fit the narratives, let them play. What's your preferred lightning wallet? And how do you feel about privacy wallets like Wasabi wallet? Uh, I have to admit first that for some random reason, I never really got into Breeze. I've been told Breeze is great. I have Breeze. I just didn't have time for some reason. I always postpone. I, I know the CEO, I like the guy. And so I would love to explore Briz more, but I didn't. So right now I'm really exploring a lot of the, those kind of, uh, what I use mostly for my lighting stuff is Zeus connected with my C lighting node. So it's not even a lighting wallet. It's just a remote for my lighting node. That's what I mostly use. But I'm, especially for noobs that don't have a lighting node at home, I am especially trying to understand the UX challenges and the UX trade-offs in a partially centralized wallet, non-custodial, but centralized wallet, like, for example, Phoenix and Moon, which are the two things I'm, I'm watching more. I think, there is, I, I think they are great. Uh, they are the right direction. I think that the best will be 
to have uh, the uh, the back end of Moon and Phoenix Eclair, respectively, open source and easy to deploy, just like uh, you know Umbrel Node or Dojo or uh, or uh, My Node or Raspberry Blitz, to have this kind of easy spin up a Phoenix um, a Phoenix uh, back end, and then a very easy pairing mechanism. Just scan this QR code and you are paired, and then it will be cool to have one single wallet uh, being able to be paired with several equivalent servers doing all the function and paying this server just right now when you do uh, atomic swap in or atomic swap out or trampoline node path discovery or watchtower function or backup function you pay uh, well actually just for the swap basically but in principle you pay moon and you pay eclair for their centralized service so the, the greatest thing would be to have, uh, like, I'm a, let's assume I'm a clear. I, I, I roll up a mobile wallet like Phoenix and a free open source one click install after verification of the signature uh, Raspi Blitz like node. And uh, if, you get, if you add me, you will pay fees to me when we do atomic swap in, atomic swap out, trampoline node, backup channel. Uh, uh, or, or whatever, or liquidity providing like Bitrefill Tor to, to give you income, uh, like inbound liquidity. But if you install your friends or family node, if you pair with your fam friends or family node or another node or another company, you will split the payment to me and them. And so you will be, you, you will be incentivized to have uh, many servers and the servers will be incentivized to be run because they will make money out of being server. So this kind of semi-centralized design, I think that would be super dangerous for the base layer, but for the upper layer where there are smaller amounts involved, I think it's, it's a good kind of small centralization. It's a po it's, it could be like, a, uh, it will not be a centralization like single point of failure. It would be like more many islands of small centralization for efficiency. And if you just uh, take down one, no money gets lost and you just lose time and you just lose UX and you have to switch to another server. So that will probably be the best. But so I'm, I'm following the experiments with uh, Phoenix and when people ask, and, and Moon, and when people ask me which one to start trying with, I usually either sell, uh, well, actually sometimes I just say Blue Wallet because it's custodial, but it's very, very good. And uh, so if, if you want to try, uh, the, the important thing is to be honest with the trade-off, I say, you can use Blue Wallet. You just have to know that you are just asking other people to do lighting stuff for you uh, as long as you trust them and as long as that's legally viable, unless you switch it to your node with BLW, which is probably something you are not able to do yet. If you just want to do something in between, there is Phoenix and Moon and probably Breeze, which I want to look, uh, look into more. Uh, I do mostly push for lightning for mobile wallet I don't think that mobile wallet for, for, for cold storage makes any sense at all, almost. I, do, I don't use mobile wallets without lighting anymore, actually. So now, Samurai, uh, I had a, like a, a Twitter fight with Samurai uh, last uh, week. Uh, I used to love the wallet, but I started to actually uh, fall out of love with the wallet, mostly because the anti-lightning attitude, I think that uh, Lighting is not perfect. Light, lighting has many problems, and we have to fix those problems. But just going full on chain uh, as, as that was something reasonable in the long term, I'm sorry, but it isn't. The blockchain cannot scale. So uh, if you don't like lightning, fix it and do something better. But there is no way you can onboard people on chain for long because the, the, the time chain doesn't scale by design and by definition. Also, all the privacy problem we are trying to fix are also created by the abuse of global consensus on chain. So lightning, uh, if, if we, uh, a, a, good, a, a good design of lightning may even be way more private than current on-chain transaction. Of course, this is not the case right now because the current designs are not really optimized for privacy, but it, it may be. So a mobile, especially if you are focusing on mobile wallet, uh, assuming that fees will go higher and people and like poor people in Venezuela will not really be, uh, uh, they will probably stop doing on-chain transaction most of the time and it will switch to layer two transaction anyway for price dynamics. So just let's focus on understand 
how the, for example, Phoenix is a is a uh, is a problem for uh, for privacy because you are connected with the centralized server. So there is Tor, which is optional, and we should probably push for Tor as default and blah blah blah. And then when you create a channel, maybe you can do a page join to create the channel and a page join to close the channel, which will basically break the trivial connection. And then eventually, Lightning will evolve with uh, with the leaky point stuff and, and stuff like that. So that will be the way. And I think Samurai Wallet is not following that way. And, um, and uh, also, I think that uh, Samurai Wallet is, well, my, my, my uh, start of the fight was when I wrote a paper, uh, a lot of paper, a treatise, an article on, uh, on Bitcoin Magazine, which is mentioning the importance of privacy in Bitcoin as fundamental and uh, CoinJoin as a very, very important best practice. And I mentioned three, uh, conjoin implementation. The one I use, which is joint market, uh, the one I, I do suggest, except that it's very, very difficult as UX, so most people are not able to run it because of UX challenges. The one I don't use, but I like, which is Wasabi, which is a centralized but blind uh, mixer uh, invented by Nopara with the Chamia link. And then I mentioned Whirlpool, which is the mobile-based um, uh, fork of Wasabi, basically. Which, uh, with small changes to make it more uh, reasonable to mobile and stuff like that. And then I was attacked by Samurai people because I also mentioned the other two, which are broken and sent people in jail, which is absolutely not true. Okay.